Welcome back. So here's the problem. The Russians did it before and they could do it again and next time they may really do some damage. But Senator Bill Nelson's claim the Russians have access to Florida's election systems is problematic for a number of reasons. For one, he didn't offer evidence and when he asked about it, he said it was classified. That opened him up to criticism from people like Governor Rick Scott, who knows full well if it is classified, Nelson can't offer details. But as we said before, the Russians did infiltrate Florida's election system in 2016. And the question is, what are we doing now to make sure that next time it doesn't cause real damage? And joining us for more are Sarasota Election Supervisor Ron Turner, the Manatee County Supervisor of Elections Mike Bennett, and Sir Serge Jorgensen, the president of Sarasota-based cyber security firm silent gentlemen thank you all for for joining us so Ron let me start with you and you when you first heard Senator Nelson's mm -hmm. comments that it's going on right now what was your reaction well first of all I, I'd say that for myself and I'm sure my colleague here and all the other supervisors in Florida we take security election security very seriously so you know it's become a big part of our job it always has been part of our job but it certainly has more attention now so that would concern any elections administrator, I would think, who is responsible for making sure that our elections are fair, accessible, and secure. Um, now, what specifically Senator Nelson was talking about, again, as you mentioned in the intro, uh, we're not quite sure. Um, we did recently have, as was reported uh, in the intro segment to, to the show tonight, that Homeland Security and the FBI have said there are no new incursions in Florida and there's nothing ongoing that they're aware of at this point. Yeah, Mike, you're, you're, you're by nature also a politician uh, and I'm wondering if what could have happened here, Senator Nelson did hear something in a classified setting that maybe the FBI and Homeland Security doesn't want out in public in any kind of way, and he put himself into a box where he cannot offer any more details. I gotta tell you, I, I feel like he just got ahead of himself. When I first heard the comment, you know, that the Russians have infiltrated the system, I was thinking of in what line? Have they been, you know, on the Facebook? Have they been on Twitter? Have they been putting out social media to change the election one way or the other? But as far as getting into actually physically cracking the system, I'm sure Serge will go into more of the detail how difficult that is. I certainly won't say it can't be done, but I just don't believe that he meant anything as far as cracking the actual system. And Serge, let's be clear about this. The concern, obviously, to, to all of us would be changing votes. That's, correct me if I'm wrong, not really in the offering. Is the vulnerability, and we'll talk about this more a little, in a little bit, maybe changing voter roles or doing what? I think the larger vulnerability is just influencing how people go to the polls and, and vote and let them actually cast the ballot. But if you can influence them before they get to the polls, then you've done most of your job. And, and that's really what happened in 2016, that the, uh, by releasing the, you know, John Podesta's emails and Hillary's emails, you're, you're bringing negative publicity to them, and that is what we're talking about in terms of influencing elections. Sure, misinformation is one of the strongest tools in, in any adversary's uh, quiver. Okay, we are just starting with this, our conversation on the possibility of Russia hacking into the elections in Florida continues. Welcome back. What is being done to make sure our election systems in Florida are secure? Joining us for more are Sarasota Election Supervisor Ron Turner, the Manatee County Supervisor of Elections Mike Benefit, uh, Bennett, I'm sorry, and Serge Jorgensen, the president of Sarasota-based cybersecurity firm Silent. So let's do a, a primer for everyone and first um, describe what systems are linked and what systems are not. The voting booth or the voting machines, Ron, are not linked together or available somehow through the cyber world, correct? Right, so the voting system that we have and we Mike's have. is the same, same system is a closed network system. So A, you vote on a paper ballot, right? So we always have the paper to go back to where the voter cast their vote originally. When you go to place that paper ballot into the tabulator, into the ballot box at that precinct or that early voting site, 
that machine is actually tabulating those votes there. So at the end of the night or at the end of the period when voting closes, it will tell you how many voted for candidate A on that device, how many voted for candidate B on that device. And at the end of the election, what we're doing is combining those totals from those machines to come up with the countywide results that we report for the county to determine our winners in Sarasota County and what we report to the state of Florida for our state results. So yes, they're independent of e e each other, though, those machines. Well, let's stay on that for a second, Mike, because let's say you, you take a congressional race. Let's say the 16th congressional district, which is here, you're dealing with three different counties, Sarasota, Manatee, and Hillsboro. And I would imagine it's the state site, which is the, the final you know, uh, place where the votes go. At that point, can't somebody get into that system and change numbers? I think it'd be very, very difficult. I don't know anything about their system. I think Serge could probably go into a lot more detail on the technical side of that. But when we send it up, uh, they s come back to us to verify the numbers that we sent to them. And so right. before they're posted, so oftentimes on election night, people say, well, you just announced the results. Why aren't they official? The results are not official until Tallahassee agrees with us, we agree with our machines, everybody agrees, okay? So we've got double or triple checks on this, and we wanna make sure that the numbers are reported before they're official are the real numbers. So, Serge, let, let's take it from the state level, and, and we, you know, we might describe the checks there, but are we absolutely positively sure that the state system cannot be hacked? I think you can never be positively sure that something can't be hacked. Um, if you, you'd be positively sure that it could be hacked, but as you say, the checks and balances that are there are the important pieces, and confirming that what you expect is what you actually have. Can I add something to that? Sure. So what you're seeing on the public website, either on our websites or what you see like uh, at the state website, those, even when the official results are, are posted there on that site, those are not the official results for an election. We're reporting our results in a different system to the state that is not, uh, that public site that you're seeing there. So that's another checks and balance here too that because the, the vote totals are reported to them in a different way. We have to take a quick break. We're just getting warmed up on our conversation on the possibility of Russia hacking into our election system in Florida. We'll continue after a quick break. Stay with us. Welcome back. What is being done to make sure our election systems in Florida are secure after Bill Nelson's comments earlier this month? Joining us for more are Sarasota Election Supervisor Ron Turner, the Manatee County Supervisor of Election Mike Bennett, and Serge Jorgensen, the president of Sarasota-based cybersecurity firm Silent. So here we, we talked about the voting machines. Let's talk about the voting rolls here. And Ron, it, it, if you remember during the 2016 campaign, what we were told was uh, the Russians tried to send phishing emails uh, into different counties. Um, could the, the goal there, if there is any goal, to mess around with the voter rolls and you know, therefore either drop Republicans or drop Democrats or whatever? Well, I guess that that's one of the hypotheticals there that, that could happen because we're speculating at this point. Um, certainly, I think that, uh, and as we've talked about a little bit, uh, as far as kind of uh, destabilizing things, you know, that kind of nature. Um, but, uh, you know, with the voter rolls, there, it, it's different than the voting system because the voter rolls are uh, connected statewide through a Florida voter registration system that we access online. Uh, so that is, is a different. Uh, definitely a different uh, kind of category that, than the voting system. But what their goal was as far as phishing emails, well, A, Sarasota County, and as far as I know, Manatee County didn't receive any phishing emails, so let's put that out there to begin with. But B, you know... Um, you know, and, and Serge, let me ask you this question, because other states have had other problems in, in terms of what happened in 2016. I mean, if we weren't that impacted in Florida, were there states that really did have much more of a problem? There are certainly states that we worked with that had a very targeted issue from a number of attackers going after information uh, held by the uh, elections organizers. But it really was more from an information collection standpoint, not from an alteration of an election result. 
It's, they're collecting data, they're looking for information that they can use to manipulate the people more than actually the machines. Well, I mean, are you talking about the influence campaign, negative news stories and so forth, or are you talking about something else? Negative news stories, targeted advertising, uh, hacking into uh, people's emails and releasing the contents of those emails, even this type of thing where you're talking about investigations that might be going on, all are targeting one of our greatest strengths of democracy and, and voting and causing that to be questioned and causing people to wonder if it's worth it and is the system working. And, and, but the bottom line is you, we, we cannot guarantee 100% that the systems, whether it's in, here in Florida or elsewhere, are, cannot be accessed. I think you have lots of checks and balances in place, but uh, any 100% guarantee is going to be impossible. Mike, the one question I wanted to ask you, and you've been pretty out there on this, you know, we reported in our story that Florida got $19 million from the, uh, from the federal government to beef up our security systems. What was that money spent on? Has it been spent effectively? I think that was spent very poorly and very ineffectively. I think any time that you come down to a government official, myself included, and mandate that we're going to give you this money, but if you don't spend it immediately, we're going to take it back. Okay, so consequently, I think what they should have been doing is looking at exactly what we're talking about tonight. Should we do we have a better backup system for the voter roll in Tallahassee? To me, that's really where the cybersecurity money should have been spent, making sure that surge and those people who know this could get there and really assure the people of the state of Florida that the money's being well spent and what are we spending it on. The fact that they sent me $260,000 or something like that, we had to find ways to spend it. So and that's just, that's just a poor way to spend so government kind of money. what did you spend it on? Oh, we bought some shatterproof windows and we put some bullards out there so you couldn't drive a truck through the front door of my office. I mean, some was just insane. I mean, we did go with some security cameras around, but as far as the cyber security itself, Nothing. Ron, okay. what did you spend the money on? Uh, we are doing upgrades to our electronic poll books. So we that's a large purchase, which took all of the funds that we had. But again, when we're talking about cybersecurity and the voter rolls, when you go to check in to vote uh, in many counties in Florida, Sarasota included, you're doing that through an electronic um, book that's connected to the internet. So we wanted to make sure that we had the latest technology there. But we also, I will say, at least you know, in Sarasota County, we still print paper precinct registers as a backup. And uh, we have that for every election and do in case our electronic poll books were to go down or we have to revert back to that information. And of course, we have provisional ballots also, we were talking earlier, which help us again, because you know, we wanna make sure that although something may not be foolproof as far as online voter registration data, that we have systems in place. So Serge, if the federal government gave Florida $19 million, why wasn't there any kind of coherent strategy on the state level or the federal level about exactly how to spend the money? Information sharing tends to be one of the most difficult hurdles to overcome for us. You know, if, you, if the state goes to ask the counties or the federal government comes to ask the states and says, what do you need? That's a very, very long turnaround time and those requests to trickle down to the county levels and, and each county may give different answers. But, so. but, but wouldn't a state, whether it's Florida or another state, hire a company maybe like yours to say, okay, give us a strategy in terms of, you know, uh, pretty quickly in terms of what should we be watching for, looking for, and spending money on? Some states are setting up their information sharing centers to allow the counties to communicate better amongst themselves and to raise their overall uh, cybersecurity posture and, and maturity levels from the counties. But even in those states, it's very, very difficult because they have some very rich counties and very poor counties. And those uh, differences in, in cybersecurity preparedness leave some gaps for attackers to, to move through. And speaking of, I mean, there were some counties in the state of Florida absolutely needed that money. I mean, they really, truly did. Manatee wasn't one of them, okay? We were going to upgrade our poll books anyhow. We were already doing that. We had it in our budget. I would have rather have seen them take the money, give it to Surge, say, come up here, to tell us what we can possibly do to make us better. Should we have another whole voter uh, roll system off-site somewhere, maybe out of Tallahassee? Let's have it down in Miami. Let's have it in Sarasota. Uh, let's have a backup systems. I think we just could have done a better job at that because when people lose confidence in our voting system, 
they're going to lose confidence in our country. Absolutely. We have to take another quick break, and we'll be back for final thoughts in a moment. Stay with us. And our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And, and Ron, we, we were, what we were just saying in our, during our commercial break, there's, there's a lot of back and forth in terms of whether Bill Nelson blew it or not right. in or got ahead of himself. But in the end, uh, both of you guys are saying that in some way he did us a, a, a service by raising the issue to the top and making sure everybody was on their toes. Certainly, uh, it's an important issue. It should be something that, you know, I know Mike and I are both concerned about. Um, it should be, you know, every election administrator in the country, especially every supervisor here in Florida, in the state of Florida. It certainly helped raise awareness. We got a lot of attention, I will tell you, from voters, the public that emailed, called, um, to check with me to say, you know, what are you doing about election security in Sarasota County? Should we be concerned about this? So he certainly raised uh, awareness, and it's not something that we take lightly. Um, I, it, it's an important, obviously an important topic, something where we can't let our guard down, and we've got to keep, you know, working at it because things change in technology, you know, things change in society, and it's something that we have to keep working at uh, as supervisors of elections here because we can't lose faith in our system. Mike, is there one piece of equipment or software or, or security that you, at this stage, don't have that you wish you did? You know, I wouldn't be the one to define that because right now I'm pretty darn happy with what we've got. Uh, Serge might have some ideas, we, you know, because we're working around the country and seeing what other people have got. But from a Florida's viewpoint, from, you know, we've been treated well. The Manatee County's been outstanding with our budgets and working with us. Uh, so, no, I think we're in pretty good shape. So, so I'll ask you, Serge, uh, on the statewide level at least, what is the one thing that you think that we should be doing as a state or at different counties that we're not doing yet? I think information sharing tends to be one of the, the highest priorities and something that would be most functional is that if one county is seeing something, the ability to share that information with other counties and develop a cohesive response to that is, is one of our strongest strengths. Unfortunately, this same argument in politicizing the, the attacks like this tears that apart because suddenly no one wants to talk to each other and everyone's trying to do their own thing. So a better way to share information and a better way to to get the state working together, whether it's to develop a, a common cybersecurity maturity curve or, or a threshold that everyone's working towards and getting some, some tools in place, whatever they may be, they're going to be different for different counties, um, but something to, to advance the, the cost. You know, the information sharing is actually pretty good in the state of Florida because the supervisors elections have an organization mm -hmm. made up of all 67 and we are constantly on the email warning each other of things that we saw. Don't, you know, this is something that happened. All right, we have to leave it there, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Before we go, we want to share with you what some of our viewers had to say about Friday's show on the race for governor here in Florida. It didn't take long for the two candidates to start attacking another, each other. Republican Ron DeSantis saying, quote, the last thing we need to do is monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda. Democrat Andrew Gillum saying DeSantis is going to divide the state of Florida like President Trump is doing to the country. So we went to Facebook for your thoughts. Paul says, I don't believe DeSantis's monkey this up comment was intentionally a racial slur, but it does show he doesn't think before he opens his mouth. Lisa says, instead of basing your opinion on commercials and Facebook, try something new. People sit down and do some real research, not just Google whatever pops up first. Try doing real research and don't blame the news for your lack of follow through. And Joe says it didn't offend anyone. The left just ran with it out of desperation and it won't change votes on either side. We will like Ron and the Dems still like the socialists. Hey, Joe, can you even define what the socialist is? Just saying. If you'd like to join the conversation on tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash mysuncoast.com.abc7. We want to thank our guests for being here tonight, Sarasota Election Supervisor Ron Turner, the Manatee County Supervisor of Elections Mike Bennett, and Serge Jorgensen, the President of Sarasota-based cybersecurity firm Silent. 